Good morning, everybody. Grace and peace to you on this Lord's Day. It is a joy to see all of you this morning. So glad that you have come for our hour of worship today. Uh, we are a combined community, by the way. So it's St. John's folks and Country Club United Methodist folks all here today. We're glad to have our friends from Country Club. Their power is out. And so Angie asked me last night if they could come to church. It took me about 13 seconds to think about the answer on that one. I said, ah, sure, why not? We've got space. You guys can come hang out with us. So we are glad that you are here with us today. For those of you that are online with us at home, we are glad that you have joined us as well. We're going to encourage you to do a couple of things. Number one, for those at home, quickly find your email that came to you this morning. It has not only your worship guide attached to it, which is, looks like this for all of us, and it also has a registration, so we would encourage you to say good morning, leave a quick comment, let us know that you are present. For those of you that are here physically with us today, there is a little black attendance pad in each one of your rows. If you want to sign in, for particularly the St. John's folks, sign in, let us know that you're present. The Country Club folks, you're more than welcome to put your name down on there. I will not poach you from Andy, or from Angie. I'm just, just telling you that. Not going to contact you and anything like that, but it'd be nice probably for her to know who all was here today, so please feel free to also sign in. Uh, in your worship guide, this has everything that you need to participate in our order of worship today. You can just simply follow along. It has our music, our liturgy, all of the information. So we'd encourage you to do that. We've got a baptism today as well. Uh, so we are looking forward to having a wonderful worship service with you. Uh, today we're going to start a new message series. It's titled Self Talk. We're going to talk about Jesus' I Am sayings in the Gospel of John. We're going to start with his saying where he says, I'm the bread of life, and what that might mean for us. And so we're looking forward to our conversation on that. We also have some invitations in our worship guide. Those begin on page number 14, so you can look through those, uh, particularly for our community of faith. It's the ways in which we worship, learn, serve, and witness together. So I would invite you to take a moment just to read through each of those. Don't forget we've got a silver and gold event this week on Thursday, the 20th, 1130. We're going to have some lunch at Grand Street Cafe, so I Hope uh, if you have not signed up yet, that you will certainly let Jenny Miller know. Uh, VBS is coming up for us, so please make note of those dates, if you would, particularly uh, the decorating day that we're going to have. That's next Friday. This Friday. Um, this Friday. Yeah, this coming Friday. Yeah. yeah this coming Friday. This next Friday. <laughs> Four days. You want to come do the announcements? Come on. Come on. Right here. All yours. Well, people, you can do the VBS. One. Okay. Well, people get confused with this next now. Then, sorry. <laughs> next Friday. This upcoming Friday. Okay. Okay. Tomato, tomato. <laughs> Five days. We're going to be decorating for VBS, everybody. So, if you want to come down, we'd appreciate it. It kicks off a week from tomorrow and everything. What? Sorry. Nine o'clock. Thank you, Marilyn. Nine o'clock. She's giving me hand signals from <laughs> nine a.m. to four. But I'll be here. I'm just going to live here. You do that one too while you're here. Okay, here. perfect. We're going to have elementary school Bible presentations in the fall. So if you have an elementary school student, third grade or above, if you want to shoot me their name that you would like on their um, Bible and everything, we're going to be handing those out on the Sunday before Thanksgiving, which I believe is the 19th. 19th? Yes. Perfect. Cool. And Can if, I tag back in? Or are you good? Well, and if you haven't already registered your child for VBS, let me know. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Thank right. you. Pleasure hey. doing business. Thanks. Right. Um, another quick announcement to make you aware of. So July 31st through that week of um, the first two weeks of August, we will not have um, water here at the church facility. So I want to make sure that you guys know we'll be closing the offices. We're going to do a water project, which is a new line that's coming in from the street inside and stuff like that. So those first two weeks of, of August, the church office will be closed. You'll be able to contact us if you need information or anything like that. If you've got something planned, just so you know, won't have running water, friends. Toilets won't flush, so probably should not have a, an event. But just let me know um, and let the office know if you've got some questions about that. And then we've got folks from neighbor to neighbor that are here today. Greg's going to come up in a little bit. He's going to share some things about what's going on at the neighbor to neighbor community. So I'm looking forward to him being able to do that as well. So as we continue in worship, dear friends, I'm going to invite you to turn to pages 2 and 3 because there you'll find our opening hymn. It is Rejoice Ye Pure in Heart. It's United Methodist hymn number 160. We're going to sing stanzas 1, 3, and 5. And so as you are able, I would invite you to stand and let's sing together. <laughs>
It's me again, the problem. Okay, Fam sorry, I'm Allie Cobb, Director of Family Ministries, and our call to worship this morning is found on the bottom of page three. Our worship is in the name of the Father, the one eternal God in whom we live and move and have our being, and of the Son, our crucified and risen Lord Jesus Christ, through whom the love of God is made manifest among us, and of the Holy Spirit, the counselor by whom we become the people of God in the Church of Jesus Christ. All praise be to Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please remain standing as you are able for our hymn of praise. It is on the top of page four, as a fire is meant for burning, and it is from the faith we sing, number 2,237. <laughs> I would invite everyone to please be seated. And so now we're going to take a moment to celebrate baptism today. And so I'm going to invite Justin and Megan to come at this time. Corbin, you may come as well as godparents. Come stand with me, if you would, please, right around the baptismal font. Congregation, if you'll find in your worship guide, pages four and five, there you will see the liturgy for the sacrament of baptism. And so, brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All of this is God's gift offered to us without price. And so, Justin and Megan, I'm going to ask you first what name has been given to this child that you present today for baptism. And these questions, on behalf of the whole church, I ask them to you. Do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers in this world, and repent of your sins? Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in His grace, and promise to serve Him as your Lord in union with Christ, in union with the church, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? 
And will you nurture this child in Christ's holy church that by your teaching and example, she may be guided to accept God's grace for herself, to profess her faith openly, and to lead a Christian life? And congregation, do you as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? And will you nurture one another in Christian faith and live and include Emerson now before you in your care? And so let us pray. O oh, gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and on those who receive it, to wash away their sin and clothe them in righteousness through their lives, that dying and being raised with Christ, they may share in his final victory. Amen. So we're going we're gonna to see if we can do this. So Emerson, do you want to try to come to me? No? Okay, <laughs> stay with Mom. We're going we're gonna to play dodge and duck here, and we'll see if we can do this. All right, so Emerson... Emerson Ann Evans, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son yes, I know. and of the Holy Spirit. And may the Spirit of God bless and be with you and keep you and may you become a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ that follows him all the rest of your days and the people of God said, Amen. Amen. And so this is Emerson Ann Evans, cute as can be. So let's take a moment now, congregation. Members of the household of God, I commend Emerson to your love and to your care. Do all in your power to increase her faith, confirm her hope, and perfect her in love. So the God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you might live in his grace and in his peace. Amen. And so this is Emerson's baptismal certificate. I will give that to you. This is a little holding cross for her as well. That's a gift from us. I'm going to light her candle. It'll stay lit through the rest of the service. After the service is over, come and claim her baptismal candle as well. It's a joy to special and special to spend this time with you guys, and thank you so much. Please be seated. It is now time for children's moments. So, any children or children at heart that would like to come forward at this time, this moment is for you. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. How is everybody today? Good. Well, I'm Miss Allie, for those of you who have not met me yet, and I get the best job because I get to give kids candy and donuts. Today is Donut Sunday. So on the third Sunday of the month, we sell donuts, and all that money goes to help us feed our friends at Neighbor to Neighbor. So today, we're going to talk about the importance of donuts. So what is your guys' favorite kind of donuts? And there is no wrong answer here, by the way. <laughs> any Jelly donuts. Any kind of donuts from Pastor Jim in the back? How about you? The gray kind of donuts? Oh, glazed. Sorry, glazed donuts. Well, gray donuts are good because those are normally the chocolate kind, too. Glazed is your favorite. How about you? The long johns, filled or unfilled? filled okay so everybody has kind of their preference of donuts so let's talk about my donut that I have here today and it's in a baggie so it is available for sale afterwards if anybody really wants this special donut so tell me a little bit about this donut what do you guys see with this donut it's mm -hmm, it's pink it's sprinkly it's round 
has a hole in it. Yeah. So donuts and everything, a lot of times, sometimes people focus in on the hole of the donut. But what we need to always remember is to focus on what is around the donut. So we have some sweet things, we have some sprinkles, it's probably sprinkled with a little bit of love and everything. And that's how we need to be in life. We need to focus on all the good things that we have and not what is missing because Jesus is our bread of life and Jesus has provided us with everything that we will ever need to be taken care of in life. And as long as we focus on all that we have and all that we don't have, kind of like the whole, we will have a very sweet life. You ready to pray with me? Okay. Dear Lord, thank you for your many blessings in our lives. Thank you for all of the things that we have. Let us focus on all of the good that you have given us. In your name we pray, amen. Well, until we can get donuts after worship, would you guys like a piece of candy in the meantime? And afterwards, it is time for Sunday school. So anybody who wants to join me for Sunday school, you are more than welcome to in the back. And we're going to actually be making sack lunches today for our friends at Neighbor to Neighbor. So I'll put you all to work. Did you get a piece? Okay. Everybody get a piece? Okay. Okay. So not only do we have our friends from Country Club with us today, we also have Greg Parr, who is with Neighbor to Neighbor. And I've invited to come, uh, ask Greg to come and spend just a few moments sharing with you what's going on at Neighbor to Neighbor. There's some interesting news about what's transpiring there in their ministry and the ways in which we can also respond to this. This is a great time for us to hear from them, too, because in a few moments we will start in with then our prayer time. So, Greg, if you want to come, I'll hand you the microphone. We agreed on how long? Uh, you said 20 minutes? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you're cutting into my sermon time, so. Anyway, uh, first, I'm a pastor buck. I'm a pastor buck through John Sullivan here. For, he, he got a couple minutes to speak. A faithful volunteer of Neighbor Neighbor for tw two, more than two decades. I started right out of high school. So, uh, <laughs> it's been an interesting ride, but uh, the events of the last week really have thrown us for a loop. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar, so saw, saw the news reports, you see that our host church, Mount Washington Missionary Baptist Church, now known as the uh, Mount Christian Worship Center, uh, suffered a large fire loss on Wednesday morning, so that the church is um, shut down. As a result, we are shut down, and what that means is we can no longer get access to our, our kitchen and our dining area and fellowship hall to breakfast and lunch to our guests and so we are serving sack lunches only unfortunately our supplies that we use for the sack lunches have been contaminated by smoke and water damage so we basically have to rebuild from scratch insurance will help us but in the interim um, as Jesus said feed my sheep uh, we've always taken that to be not only feed my sheep but feed the heart the soul the mind the spirit uh, with the food that we serve the love so any help that we can get, anyone who's interested in volunteering time, uh, supplies, I can get a list of what we need to, uh, to Ruth Gerald, and she can possibly share that with you. Um, but we are in desperate need. We want to continue to serve. We brought our guests and guests with us today, William and Rick and Michael. We want to be able to continue to serve their needs as we move forward to figure out what our next steps are. So prayers are needed. Help is needed. Volunteering is needed. Thank you and God bless. Well, uh, we we did bring some guests, and uh, John just mentioned their names, starting with Mike. Mike, uh, can you stand up so everybody can? These are alumni of Neighbor to Neighbor, by the way.
and Little Rick. Somebody say amen. You know, I'm going to get an amen from Re uh, Reverend Hoffman in a minute, but I'm going to say, hey, hey, Lord, fill my mouth with worthwhile stuff and nudge me when I've said enough. Exactly if it's two minutes like Reverend Hoffman wanted. <laughs> but uh, uh, short story. Short story is I did drugs for 50-plus years of my life. I became homeless. I traveled to different places. I ended up in Kansas City. Uh, I was homeless, I panhandled, I begged for money in Westport. I made about two fifty, three hundred dollars a day uh, panhandling and selling fake drugs uh, to tourists from Leewood, Overton Park, Shawnee Mission. But anyway, uh, I ended up, you know, having an alcoholic seizure October 5th, 1994, and I went to a recovery house in Kansas because I had so many warrants for my arrest in Missouri. Uh, in that recovery house, I stayed sober or abstinent, I like to say it, but uh, <laughs> I called it sobriety, my first year and a half of sobriety. And uh, after I'd been there for a while, I thought about all the harm that I'd caused my family and my friends and all my loved ones. I stole from my mother to support my drug habits. I stole from, lied to my brothers to support my drug habits. I had been arrested so many times. And I ended up uh, having an alcoholic seizure October 5th, 1994. And when I had that alcoholic seizure, I went through that treatment center and I, and, I, and I got sober. But I started thinking about all that stuff, all the stuff, that, and I was filled with guilt, shame, and remorse. And that particular night, like a guy named Saul, God entered my heart and I had the Holy Spirit because I wasn't raised in church. Any of you ever felt the Holy Spirit before, say amen. amen. And I didn't know what was going on and God was wanting me the next day to turn myself in back to Missouri, because I was arrested 97 times in Kansas City, Missouri, and God wanted me to come back to Missouri, the same area where I was arrested 97 times, and help other people find him. And, uh, you know, I, when I kept hearing that thought, go ahead, turn yourself in on 24 warrants, I said, hold on, I just met you. <laughs> but I kept hearing, I'm going to take care of you. So I went to court for a, a whole year, and every case was dismissed, one at a time. And, and uh, we started neighbor to neighbor way back when, after Dorothy Nell, uh, who uh, was a member of Westport United Methodist Church, encouraged me to go to treatment many, many times. So far, we've helped over 4,000 people get off the streets and into treatment programs, and we continue to have that number grow. Uh, because of the fire, we still don't believe in quitting. Uh, all the people that have been coming, we served about 300 meals per day. Every, everybody that come, we want to remain there, even though the building is totaled, uh, we're outside distributing sack lunches, and I'm thanking your youth group, and I'm thanking people like Ruthie, and, and all the people that has helped uh, us with uh, donations and feeding, like Pat and Jack make sandwiches every week. Thank you. Uh, we want to thank you for all that. Please continue to help. Uh, give what you can. We appreciate it. We are helping people that are dying. 
There's many people that suffer from substance use disorder. There's many people who suffer from mental illnesses, and sometimes both. You know, I've, I'm sick and tired of finding people frozen to death. In 2002, I found that, you know, and I'll have to talk to that mother. So please continue to help us uh, at Neighbor to Neighbor and help us help other people like these three guys back here connect to Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Greg. All right. Um, so for those of us that are, that are St. John's friends, you know for the past several weeks we've been doing a special offering for neighbor to neighbor. We're going to encourage you to continue to consider doing the same thing. You know, for those of you that have our app on your phone, you know you can find a, your contribution category. You can pick your card and the amount of cash, and boom, you're off and done. If you would rather do it by check, you can certainly do that. Simply make it out to St. John's United Methodist Church, but in your memo line, put neighbor to neighbor. We were, did a challenge of $100 for family or per person in your family, and uh, so far we're doing pretty good at that, and we're looking forward to when we have a full accounting of it, being able to give an extra gift to neighbor to neighbor to help them through this time. But, you know, it's something that we support ongoing. We would encourage you to continue to do so, not only by your prayers, but by also all the things that you do as your service and as your gifts. So, Greg, we're praying for you, and we'll continue to pray for you and be there to help support you. Uh, in our joys and our concerns for today, you will see those listed on pages six and seven of your worship guide. Uh, first off, we want to thank Linda Potter. She's our sponsor today for our donuts. We have plenty of them after worship is over. You are more than welcome to stay and join us for a little bit of fellowship time. We gather over in what's called our rotunda area, which is right over here to the right as you exit the sanctuary. There's coffee there, not only as well as the donuts. So come and spend a few moments with us once worship is over. Under our concerns, we have a couple of Linda's friends that are on here, Judy and Marcia. Those are new names for us to pray for this week. Viola Bradshaw was an online prayer request that was given to us, so we lift up Viola today. And Rosie, who actually works with Greg, uh, she is going through dialysis, so if you would be in prayer for her. Many other names that are on our prayer list, these are family, friends, and acquaintances of ours, people that we've been praying for for some time. I would encourage you to continue to lift them up in your prayers. So I'm going to invite you now to a time of private prayer, an opportunity for you to share with God what's on your hearts and minds today. In a few moments, I'll lead us in a pastoral prayer. We'll pause in the middle of that. If there's a name you'd like to share out loud, we'll give you a chance to do that. So I might hear and pray for that person today. And then I invite you to join with me as we close together in the Lord's Prayer. You'll see that printed on page number seven of your worship guide. And so let's take a moment now to pause and be a people of prayer. We are gathered here from many homes, O oh God. 
and our hopes and our dreams and our needs may appear to be very different. Yet we are all aware of our deep hunger for truth and beauty and peace and love. Whatever our backgrounds and lifestyles, we know we depend on you for our very life and our happiness. Help us, therefore, to find our way to the center of life and the mystery where you are, and to lay aside all the foolish ambitions and expectations that cloud our thinking and impede our progress toward that center. Even though we are shy about making commitments, give us such a vision of the life we could enjoy in you. We shall not hesitate to worship you with all that we have and are, and to follow in the way you show us for the remainder of our days. This morning we lift up for your special care our friends and loved ones who are ill or struggling or just seem to be unhappy with life. May the divine presence rest upon them to give them rest and joy and peace this day. We remember our young people, and we invoke your continuing love and guidance in their lives. And we remember those who are seasoned with wisdom. May they share it to those that that need to hear today. May it be a gift from their lives. We pray that you give all of us fertile imaginations for envisioning what can be done to amend the ills and injustices of our entire world and that you endow us with kindness and gentleness in dealing with one another and even in dealing with those we call our enemies. We lift these and many other prayers to you this day, praying, O God, that you not only hear us, but that you give us ears so that we might hear from you in this moment. All these we offer in the name of your Son, And now we pause to lift up any names that might be upon our hearts and minds that we wish to share now in this time of prayer. In all these things, we pray in the name of your Son, who is our Lord and Savior, and the one who taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. So give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Ye people, rend your hearts, rend your hearts and not your garments. For your transgressions the prophet Elijah had sealed the heavens through the word of God. I therefore say to you, forsake your idols, return to God, for he to anger and merciful and kind and gracious and repenteth him of the evil. If with all your hearts he truly
morning. Good morning, David. Today's scripture reading comes from the sixth chapter of John, verses 35 through 38. If you'd like to follow along, it can be found on page eight of our worship guide. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But as I told you, you have seen me, and still you do not believe. All those the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven not to do my will, to do the will of him who sent me. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, David. So, you know, naturally there's a, a one Sunday a month where it's pretty easy for us to think about what it means for Jesus to be the bread of life. That Sunday would typically be in the Methodist church. What Sunday, friends? First Sunday, right? Communion, where we serve a little piece of bread and we say, this is the body of Christ broken for you. It's pretty easy for us to talk about Jesus as the bread of life. Now, here at St. John's, though, we get two Sundays a month where we can talk about Jesus as the bread of life. What's the other Sunday? The third Sunday. Donut day. Right? If you have not heard yet, we've got donuts. I hope that's not news to you, but we've got donuts. Yes, the mighty donut, right? Yeah. Now, I have to tell you, I kind of have a um, love-hate relationship with donuts. Maybe some of you do too, right? But I kind of have a, a love-hate relationship with donuts. There's one side of me that says, Jim, you really should bypass the donuts, right? What goes through the lips winds up, for some of you down here on the hips, for me, it's like right here where my donut is right? And I don't need any more donut where my donut is. So my voice kind of tells me, baby, I should bypass the donuts and stay away from them and, and other sweets and things like that. Then there's the other voice over here that says, but Jim, it's only one Sunday a month. <laughs> and it's only one or three donuts, <laughs> right? So you should be able to get away with one Sunday a month until your wife brings cinnamon rolls home from Ikea. And then it's a couple of extra days of that bread that's lovely and sweet, right? We've got these competing kind of voices that go on in our heads. And sometimes that self-talk is negative, and sometimes that self-talk can be positive. I think we're all very familiar with those little voices, right? What are the positive stories that you tell yourself about yourself? What's the, the positive talk that goes on in your head? And what's the, the negative talk? What are the negative stories that you tell yourself about yourself? And whether you know it or not, friends, we all talk to ourselves. doesn't mean you're crazy. It just means you have at least one voice in your head that you're listening to. And maybe through the next few weeks, the next several weeks, we'll discover that there's other voice, another voice that really wants to speak into our lives that can have power if we're willing to listen. But like I said, I'll admit, I, I talk to myself, right? And sometimes that negative talk comes out. It comes out in kind of a variety of different areas. And often, you know, that talk kind of makes you think about where you're less than in your life or, or where you feel a little incompetent. And that talk kind of reinforces some of that feeling. When I was at North Star Church up, up in the Liberty area before I came to St. John's 10 years ago, I had a, a member of the church there that asked me to go golf with him one, one afternoon. We went to Shoal Creek Golf Course, beautiful golf course up there. It was a mild afternoon. The weather was really nice. The company was really good. I enjoyed golfing with Brennan. And in typical fashion, I started out playing halfway decently. I was feeling pretty good about my game. I was kind of respectable for the moment, but as usual, around hole number seven or eight, my swing got a little bit out of rhythm. And before you know it, it's off the rails. And I started hitting some bad shots and I started missing easy greens and my putting no longer was there and the negative talk started in my head. And before I knew it, the negative talk was coming out through my lips and my friend Brennan, who's there, heard me. My church member was listening in the moment, right? A few holes went by and Brennan finally looks at me and he says, you know, Jim, 
Maybe you'd talk a little more positively about your game. You might even enjoy this just a little bit more. And I thought for a moment, you know what? It's good to have some smart, wise people around you. Amen? Right? It's good to have some smart, wise people around you every once in a while. I'm not a great golfer. I'm not even a good golfer. I would say I'm an average golfer. But when the negative talk starts, I become a bad golfer. And even worse, I can become a bad golfing companion. And who wants to be around someone like that, right? We need good advice. We need people to be positive and give us good advice and, and to listen to them and to think about the things that are going on in our heads and, and the voice that's going on in our head and how we mitigate some of that negativity that goes on up there. But you know, besides the voice that often puts us down, there's also the voice in our head that maybe uh, props us up a little too much. Do you know what that means, friends? makes us a little overconfident in some of the things that we attempt to do in life. And, and maybe we should step back and, and take a little bit of wisdom and take a little bit of an assessment and think, maybe there's some things I shouldn't be doing in my life. Margaret and I used to own a, a lovely house in Longview Farm Subdivision out in Lee Summit. It was a nice house. It had a, a big, great entry in the front of it. And we, we loved it because it was, had a, kind of a beautiful view, set on the corner of a cul-de-sac. But, but this grand entry was, it had a couple of things about it that were just kind of problematic. Number one, the light bulb in that entryway was 18 feet off of the ground, right? So I had to buy one of those telescoping extension poles with a little plug on the end of it to try to figure out how to change the light bulb whenever it burned out. The other thing, though, that we didn't like about it was the columns that they built to hold up the little porch were way too narrow. They were, like, small for kind of like the, the figure or the stature of the front of the home. So I decided one summer, I'm going to make these a little bigger. So I went to the lumber yard and I bought some two by fours and I bought some siding and I bought some trim board and I started in on my little project to make them look a little bit more scale to the, to the entry of the house. And I started on the column that was to the right and it was pretty easy, flat ground. I got it pretty well constructed, got it sided, got the trim board on it, everything like that. And then I moved to the one that was on the left side. And the left side off of the stoop kind of had a sloping ground away from that column. Made it a little more problematic. I got the inside of it and the backs of it pretty well done, and I started working on the, the side of it where the ground sloped. And I was down to pretty much my last piece of siding that I needed to work with. It was about an 18-inch piece of siding. It was probably about six, eight feet long. I started up the ladder with it, and a gust of wind caught it and blew it over my head this way. It actually came out of my hand, scraped the back of my neck. I have a little scar back here that that came from it. But the other thing it did is it knocked me off my ladder as well. And luckily I wasn't holding on to the ladder because I have one of those little green giant ladders that weighs like 45, 50 pounds. That thing would have crushed me if it had hit me, right? That was the moment that I realized that there are probably some things that Jim should leave to the professionals because I might have overestimated my ability. And that little voice in my head that told me, you know what? You got this. You're all sufficient. You don't need any help. You got the skills, the capabilities, right? The moments where we kind of ignore our limitations and maybe oversell ourselves. You know, as much as we try to convince ourselves that we are more than capable, have all the skills and the tools, that we possess the wisdom to make it on our own, we can quickly learn the lesson that we are not all self-sufficient. We are not able to overcome everything in our lives. And I'd also add that, that the world doesn't necessarily possess all the sufficiency that we need to overcome everything in our lives, even some of that negative talk that we come up against. I believe in the power and the agency of the Holy Spirit active in our lives. And that we need the voice of God that comes and, and in many ways battles many of the things that go on in within us, whether it be the negative talk or the overestimating talk that's in us, that balances out who we are. We need the ever-constant bread of life in our world. In John chapter 6 is, a, is an amazing little God, uh, uh, chapter. If you, if you look at it, it's a, it's a couple of combined stories that, that tell what Jesus has going on in, in just a couple of days of his ministry, right? 
the, the chapter starts out with a story that we all know very well. Jesus sits down on the side of a hill. He's teaching. The day rolls along. It becomes evening, and all of a sudden, this 5,000 people plus men and women and children that are there, this large crowd of people are hungry. The day's coming to an end. And Philip says to Jesus, we should send them off home so that they can buy food, so they can go have their dinner, right? And Jesus says to Philip, why don't you feed them? Now, Philip's the wise guy in the, in the crowd. He's like, 5,000 men plus women and children. We've got a small village here. We don't have enough money to buy food to feed all these people. We should let them go on their own. But then Peter speaks up, and Peter says, but Lord, there's a boy here who has five loaves and two fishes. And Jesus says, well, bring them to me. And they do, and he blesses them. And then he says to the disciples, take these and break them up and give them to everybody that's seated around. And they all have dinner together, right? And then you all remember what happens at the end of the story. Jesus says to the disciples, go back out, collect all of the scraps, and how many baskets full of scraps are left over? Come on, you theologians. And the story says 12. 12 baskets out of five loaves and two fish. And then the story says that Jesus, after that, gets in a boat with his disciples, and they push off shore. It's a rough night at sea with them. But at the morning time comes, they head back to shore, and that same crowd is looking for Jesus because he fed them, and they want more. They want more bread. Everyday common bread. They want that from Jesus in that moment. And Jesus says to them, what you don't realize is I can offer you even more than just bread. I can offer you the bread from heaven, the bread of life. I can offer you what will liberate you for all the rest of your life. Not merely in this simple moment, but I can give to you what you need from each day forward if you would only accept. But all they wanted from him was the bread in the moment. Jesus says, I can give you something even greater than that. I can give you the things that will help you overcome the negative talk in your life. I can give you the bread that will help you overcome even the things where you think you are self-sufficient in the moment and that you don't need me at all. I can give you the bread that will meet your needs each and every day. Think about the bread that comes to us out of Christ in the moments where we need him the most. When we need the words of Christ to come and speak to us in the moments where we feel impoverished of spirit and the bread that comes to nourish us. You might remember in Catherine Stockett's book, The Help, that was adapted into a movie, there's, there's several wonderful little scenes in there, uh, some that are very entertaining. We're not going to entertain some of those today, but one of them that does come to mind is the moment where Abilene Clark is sitting there with a little girl by the name of Mae Moberly. And if you remember, there's a moment where she speaks over this little girl some very powerful words. She says to Mae, you are kind, you are smart, you are important. Right? A person that gives her bread that she can feast on all the rest of her life that builds her up right in that moment even though she's a young girl who's being groomed by her society to become abilene's oppressor she builds into this young girl's life she gives her bread that she can be nourished by all the rest of her days jesus is like that for us in the moments where we need him to come and speak into our lives where where life feels like it's oppressing where it is is more than what we can handle jesus can come in that moment and give us the bread that we need but jesus can also remind us that he's the bread that we need when we think we've got everything handled right how many of you think you've got everything handled in life right no maybe not but there are times where literally that voice in your head says i am all sufficient I am the one that can provide everything that I need. I really don't need anybody else. I really don't need any help from anybody else. I am all sufficient. And yet Jesus reminds us that no one is self-sufficient. We all need the master. We all need the bread of life that comes 
and delivers us even from our own betrayal of ourselves, even where we convince ourselves that we are more than self-sufficient. So we have to figure out how to let Jesus in to combat the voices that are within us, the voices that say, wow, there's no one that loves me or wants me. I'm not worthy. The voice that just continues to be negative within us, and yet the Master says, I am the bread of life that can be given to you so that you might have life now and life evermore. Or the voice that just simply says, I don't need anybody else and I don't need anything from anyone. And yet the Christ comes to us and reminds us that we are not self-sufficient and that we need Him. We have those voices in our heads that tell us at times that we are unworthy of love and grace, that, that we don't amount to anything or or that we're just simply a failure, and then it's compounded by the voice that tells us that, that we can do everything on our own, and yet we really don't understand that the bread of heaven has come for us. If only we would dine on it, be nourished by it. If you haven't been, maybe, maybe it's time to let that voice, the voice of the bread of heaven, begin to speak into your heart and into your life today. The voice that comes to you and says, I am the bread of heaven. I am the one that you need. I am all that you need. I am the one that hears your cries for help, your cries of denial. I am the one that can overcome the voice that denies me. And then maybe God will grant us each the power to listen to this Jesus this Jesus who confidently comes to offer us life that is abundant now and yet to come. And so I invite you to join me in prayer. And so holy and powerful God, you are the giver of bread, life. You are far beyond our comprehension. And yet in the grand design of your universe, you seek each one of us out. Today, we desperately seek to know you through this poor vehicle that we call words. But we pray that we might be, uh, go beyond hearing to learning what it means to be your disciples, to do your will, to follow your way. Grant that we may feel your presence this day, as did the followers who knew you in the breaking of bread. And may we experience the depth of your love as a powerful force that transforms us into faithful followers of the way of love and peace. Oh, gracious God, calm today our anxious souls, our restless minds, heal our weary bodies. Lead us into your abiding presence where we can find the nourishment that grants life now, and may you give it to us evermore. And from this, may we experience the fire within that once set people out to share the good news. For we pray this in the name of Jesus, who is the bread of life. Amen. So I'm going to invite our ushers to come at this time for our morning offering. We come to give our gifts today. Those of you that are still at home with us and, and hopefully are still online, even though we had a power flicker, but we hope you're still online with us. This is a moment where you can also join in the giving. You can do that either through our website on our donate tab, or you can do that through Christian World Media. And if you have the app on your phone, you can certainly give there as well. For those of you present today, we invite you to take a moment now to give your gifts, if you would, please. And we want to say to you, thank you so much for your faithfulness and your loving and rich generosity.